Hello, my name is Jonathan Coxall and I'd like to welcome you to the Macmillan Study Skills video lessons. There are five video lessons in this series and each video lesson has one of these, a PDF worksheet which you can download from the Mondadori website. The five video lessons are developing study skills, grammar study skills, vocabulary study skills, listening and speaking study skills and reading and writing study skills. Welcome to the second in the series of Macmillan Study Skills video lessons. The first lesson was about developing study skills. In this lesson we're going to be looking at developing grammar study skills. So today we're going to be looking at four aspects essentially of grammar study skills. The first is grammar in context. Then we're going to look at contrastive grammar, English-Italian, evaluating progress and finish with learning from mistakes. So let's look at grammar in context. It's important to look at grammar in context because it then gives you the chance to really look at the language, see how it's used and then perhaps translate or see how if there are any similarities or things which you need to note for, uh, for future reference. Let's look at the slide in greater detail. Here we have a slide which is actually looking at superlative adjectives. Um, it's key and fundamental that you look at what grammar point is being looked at. Think about the grammar point and when you've thought about what the grammar is, make sure that you fully understand or have no, realised what the grammar is in Italian or what would be the equivalent. Then we need to think about the rules. What are the rules? Are there any rules which you need to think about which are different to that or to those in Italian? Then we need to think about trying to make some sentences using that grammar and putting those sentences into context. Use the exercises which are in the book. If you use the exercises in the book, they've been written specifically to try and make sure that you can actually put into practice what you've learned. And then finally, it's a good idea to always try and write some extra sentences and just check with your teacher or somebody who knows the language if what you've written is correct. Don't write one or two, try and write as many as you possibly can to make sure that you're using a variety of this case, in this case of adjectives, in the superlative form. Okay, now we're going to look at contrastive grammar. Contrastive grammar is key because it really does help you to look at the language in use. In this particular contrastive grammar activity, we've got some translations. Translations really help to understand whether or not you've understood the grammar in English and whether you're able to then take something, from the, in this case from Italian, and put it into English. What we need to do is think about what we're being asked to do and why. Once you've established what you need to do in this particular exercise, think about the language you're going to need to use. What language are they asking you to use and are there any traps or are there any things that we need to remember to make sure that we're going to perform the activity correctly. In this case it's key to think about when the action happened. Obviously we're looking at the past tense perhaps or the present tense but more importantly in this case obviously we're looking at superlatives. The benefits of working with contrastive grammar are that they really do help you to understand the true sense of a sentence. Okay, we can start to notice the patterns and the similarities with your own language and also the key differences, the main differences which you will need to remember for future reference. When we're thinking about grammar or any language learning in general, it's really important that we are able to evaluate our own progress. How can we do this? Let's have a look at this slide to see what ways of evaluating progress there are. Firstly, it's always a good idea to try and remember to set yourselves objectives that can be met. As we saw in the first video, it's important to have a timetable and to set ourselves a target. Do that when, you, when you're learning grammar, when you're learning anything. Set yourself a clear objective. Secondly, think about what you're going to study and how you can improve on that. What methods are you going to use to make sure that the grammar or, or the language that you're learning can be done systematically in a way that will help you to improve. And finally, if you have time, take the opportunity to do some more practice. The more you learn, the more you expose yourself to language, the better you'll become at it. In the first video we talked about mistakes. Mistakes are in many ways things which we're not encouraged to do, to make, but I think they're very important and we need to learn from those mistakes. So let's have a look now at the slide which looks at learning from our mistakes. So, as we said, mistakes are necessary, but we need to learn from them. 
How can we do that? I think we need to be systematic in the way we look at mistakes and think about mistakes. Here, for example, is a question, did I do any mistakes? We actually say, make a mistake. So what we need to do is to make sure that we take note of it and write a sentence which is correct using the language that we, we've now learned. Again here, um, I've been waiting here since two hours. The fact that we've actually said since two hours is wrong, we should say I've been waiting here for two hours. Um, since we generally use to look at a, a point in time, a specific point in time in the past, whereas for is for a period of time. So, with mistakes, make sure that you're systematic in taking the, uh, the, the, making sure that you've written the errors and taking note of what are the correct forms to use. That's the end of the Grammar Study Skills video lesson. As uh, you've seen, we looked at using grammar in context, uh, contrastive grammar, how to evaluate progress, and then finally learning from mistakes. In the next lesson, we're going to be looking at vocabulary. Look forward to seeing you then. Mm -hmm.